Hey there lads and ladies, Petrifying Pumpkins here and I want to talk about Gran Turismo 7 Virtual Reality today because we got a bunch of embargoes lifting and we've been getting our first hands-on impressions of the game noticeably from the PlayStation Blog, IGN, GT Planets and Traction. Now the last or two you might not be familiar with them, they're a bit more niche. They focus on sim racing so it's kind of cool that Sony reached out to those people and gave them the hands-on impressions. Those are the guys who know what they're looking for, what they're talking about really. There's also been a ton of new footage that I'll be playing as I speak. So here's a bunch of details we learned from the Gran Turismo 7 previews. Now they mentioned the resolution was really high and that they couldn't detect the foveas at rendering while playing, although you can see it in the captured footage if you're looking for it. They confirmed you can play with either a DualSense controller or a steering wheel if you have one. So this is the first confirmed PSVR 2 game that you cannot use the new Sense controllers in as far as I know, but do keep in mind that the DualSense controllers have the ability to use the 6-axis technology inside them for a sort of a limited form of motion control if you'd like to use that. We knew it was going to be the full game available, but now we know there's an exclusive VR mode called the VR Showroom. This can be accessed in your garage and it lets you pick any of your cars, place them in one of 13 locations I believe, and then you can look all around the car, not just from the outside but also the interior, so you can really appreciate the obscene level of detail in Gran Turismo 7. They all had roughly an hour to preview this game and most of them did mention how they spent too much time in this mode because they were just admiring all these cars, all these beautiful details. Ryan McCaffrey from IGN went on to say that he owned a DeLorean in real life and when he sat in the DeLorean in virtual reality it was like he was back in it again. He seemed to be very blown away by it. The game outputs a smooth 120 frames per second per eye according to IGN but in a Famitsu article that I translated to English, they stated that that was 60 frames per second reprojected to 120 frames per second. GT Planus noted there was no drops in frames and everything ran smoothly. Those of you who may have worried about cutbacks to get the game to run should fear not. The weather effects, the lighting, the reflections seem to be mostly intact. It is a gorgeous looking virtual reality game. Traction's video claimed it is the best VR experience ever on a console, not just racing, but in general. Menus are the only part of the game that are rendered in 2D, but the transition from the 2D menus to the VR gameplay is seamless. There is headset feedback in Gran Turismo 7, but it is mostly subtle. The only time it's more pronounced is when you crash into a wall or hit another vehicle. Importantly, the previewers all mentioned that their experiences were mostly comfortable, with only a couple of instances of feeling discomfort. Sony informed GT Planet that early playtesters, who included people prone to motion sickness, were positive. So it seems the technology in the PSVR 2 headset is winning the fight against motion sickness, at least in Gran Turismo 7. IGN and GT Planet both stated that PSVR 2 enhances and elevates Gran Turismo 7 to a new level. And there you go, that's all the details I could find so far from all these hands-on previews of Gran Turismo 7. If you liked the video, if you want to stick around, you can like, subscribe, comment to all that usual YouTube and shite. Before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the description below also. That is it for this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Please stay moist and I know you will. How could you not?